In this lecture, we're going to look at the superficial structures and cutaneous innervation of the lower limb. So we're going to look at the fascia of the lower limb, both the superficial and deep, quite briefly, but we'll look specifically at the fascia lata. We'll then look at the venous drainage by way of the great and short saphenous veins, and then we'll look at the cutaneous innervation, the dermatomal distribution, and some important cutaneous nerves. So similar to the upper limb, we have a tight layer of deep fascia that is running all over the lower limb. Here we see the anterior surface of the lower limb, and here we see the posterior surface. And you see we have this glistening white membrane, which is the deep fascia. Superficial to the deep fascia, we have the superficial fascia, which is in the subcutaneous tissue just deep to the skin. This, like the superficial fascia of the upper limb, is made up of loose connective tissue and can contain fat. The superficial fascia of the lower limb, again, just like of the upper limb, is pierced by those cutaneous nerves and superficial veins. Anterior to the knee joints, the loose fascia is tightly adhered to the deep fascia of the lateral and anterior aspects, and that enables effective um, contraction of the knee joint and it pre prevents any fascia from being trapped due to flexion of the knee. Between the superficial fascia and skeletal muscles we have like, the deep fascia and again that is similar to the fascia of the upper limb. This is made up of dense well-organized connective tissue and there's no fat. So here we have the deep fascia of the lower limb and specifically we're going to talk about the fascia lata. So the deep fascia is very strong and it tightly contains all the muscles of the lower limb. This increases the contractile efficiency so the direction of pull from these muscles when they contract is controlled and it's very streamlined. The deep fascia of the thigh is the fascia lata. And it connects to the inguinal ligament superiorly, the iliac crest supralaterally, the sacrum and the coccyx posteriorly, and it's continuous with the distal femur, and also the deep fascia of the leg. So it's a tight band that covers the anterior, lateral, medial, and posterior aspects of the thigh. Here we have the fascia lata. It's thickened laterally and forms the iliotibial tract. And this iliotibial tract runs from the iliac tubercle to the anterolateral tibial tubercle. So it runs from the ilium all the way down to the tibia. And we have the iliotibial tract. The aponeurosis of the tensor fascia lata and gluteus maximus. So this is where gluteus maximus and tensor fascia lata pass into this iliotibial tract. It is their tendon, effectively. It is also continuous with the intramuscular septa and forms muscular compartments. So very similar to that of the upper limb. Now let's have a look at the renus drainage. And for the renus drainage, we need to be aware of some valves. And these are particularly important. We can see the great saphenous and the short saphenous vein being the main cutaneous um, ways that venous blood is drained from the lower limb. But we also can see we have some superficial veins that lie superficial to the deep fascia and also some deeper veins. And these cutaneous veins we can see here are perforating that fascia. We can also see that we have these valves. So the superficial veins of the lower limb really are the great and the small saphenous veins. We can see the great saphenous vein here and we can see the small saphenous vein here. And these are draining venous blood from the lower limb. The great saphenous is formed from the dorsal venous network on the dorsum of the foot. It passes through the saphenous opening in the fascia lata and it drains directly into the femoral vein. The small saphenous is formed from the lateral aspect of the foot and it enters the leg through the deep fascia and drains into the popliteal vein within the popliteal fossa and we can see these veins here. If we look at the perforating and deep veins then the perforating veins are going to pass from these superficial veins 
through the deep fascia into the deep veins. And they contain valves. And they only allow flow from superficial to deep. So blood can't flow from deep to superficial. This is important because obviously gravity is against venous return. So it prevents the blood from regurgitating back distally and blood can only be returned to the heart. And it's the valves that do this. They run obliquely through the deep fascia, so you can see them passing through the deep fascia here obliquely. And as the muscles contract, they are compressing them and this also prevents retrograde flow of blood again supporting venous return. So if we look in more detail at the venous drainage of these superficial blood vessels, the great saphenous and the small saphenous vein, then we can see we've got this dorsal network here, this dorsal venous network on the dorsal surface of the foot. We can see that that is going to give rise to the great saphenous vein. The great saphenous vein we can see here is running from this dorsal venous network on the dorsum of the foot. And then it's running up medially. We can see it's giving rise to the great saphenous vein. We can see the great saphenous vein is then passing up the medial aspect of the calf we can see it's running up here it's going anterior to the medial malleolus but then it goes posterior to the medial condyle of the femur it then passes all the way up the medial aspect of the thigh and it passes into the femoral vein by passing through the saphenous opening so we can see the great saphenous vein running up the medial aspect and emptying into the femoral vein the small saphenous, this is coming from the lateral surface of the foot. So here we can see the fifth digit. So again, coming from the dorsal venous network, we have the small saphenous. And this is running this time posterior to the lateral malleolus. So here we can see it's running posterior to the lateral malleolus. And it's running all the way up the posterior calf. It enters through the deep fascia and it passes into the popliteal vein within the popliteal fossa. So here we can see the small saphenous passing through the deep fascia and going into the popliteal vein within the popliteal fossa. If we move on to the cutaneous innervation, then this is very similar to the upper limb. And we have a whole series of dermatomes, regions of the skin on the lower limb that have specific cutaneous innervation. We can see we have T12, L1, L2, L3, 4, 5. And then we move on to the sacral spinal cord segments as then we pass up the posterior surface of the limb. So if you look at this in more detail, the cutaneous nerve supplies the skin of the lower limb, creating these dermatomes. And each dermatome is innervated by a spinal cord segment. So we can see L1 through to S5, the perianal region. We can even see details here, L4, L5 and S1 supplying the palm of the foot. If we look at L1 to L5, you can see these are a series of bands running down the anterior aspect of the lower limb. So around the knee region and the medial leg, we have L4. And the medial leg to the great toe, we have L5. We can see running down here. S1 to S5 forms more vertical bands that are running up the posterior aspect of the lower limb. And S1, we have the lateral foot, we can see here, and we also have the heel. So we can see we have the dermatome distribution running over the anterior and posterior surfaces of the lower limb. Again, we have the dermatomal distribution, but we also have specific cutaneous nerves that are coming from the lumbosacral plexus, which we'll detail. So here we can see specific nerves supplying specific regions. We can pick up the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh that's supplying the lateral aspect of the thigh. We can see the genitofemoral nerves coming here, supplying a small region on the anterior thigh. Cutaneous branches from the femoral nerve. We've got the saphenous nerve, a branch of the femoral nerve, supplying the medial aspect of the 
leg. We can see the common fibula supplying the lateral aspect of the leg. And posteriorly, we can see the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh supplying the posterior aspect of the thigh. We can see obturator nerves supplying the medial aspect. And we can see clunial nerves supplying the skin over the gluteal region. So again, we have those named branches. Iliohypogastric, ilioinguinal, we can see these supplying parts of the abdominal wall and the lower abdomen passing over the inguinal region. Lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh and the genitofemoral and the obturator I've already mentioned. We can go on to detail the femoral, saphenous, common fibula, deep fibula and superficial fibula nerves. And we can see how these are supplying various regions of the lower limb. So in this lecture, we've looked at the fascia of the lower limb, both the superficial and deep, specifically looking at the fascia lata. We looked at the venous drainage, the dorsal venous network, giving rise to the great saphenous vein and the short saphenous vein, with these draining into the femoral vein and the popliteal vein, respectively. We then looked at the cutaneous innervation with the dermatomal distribution. Again, this is determined by the developmental process, similar to the upper limb, so I didn't mention it in any detail today, but it's the same process. And the cutaneous nerves from the spinal cord segments L1 through S5 that supplies the skin of the lower limb.